Um, it's also noteworthy that uh, the Orthodox bishops in the diaspora made, um, uh, I believe it's two statements that I've seen on the subject. And I think it's very commendable that they came out uh, in support of uh, the ideal, basically, of a united Ukrainian Orthodox Church as the foundation for a united Ukraine. I think that's uh, clearly what's, what, what this whole initiative is all about. Uh, it's, a, it's an ecclesial initiative to try to bring churches together and thereby to support Ukraine. Of course, the president sees that in his own way, uh, he, he get benefits uh, for himself and so forth. But again, I think it's important uh, when uh, such statements are made that um, we remember the rights of non-Orthodox citizens of Ukraine. These are other Christians. Protestants, Catholics, um, uh, as well as people of other faiths or of no faith, who currently and hopefully into the future will continue to have uh, guaranteed uh, rights of, of uh, belief, um, so that that diversity of, of uh, uh, perspectives will be will be uh, respected. Um, I think sometimes uh, we also uh, have a tendency to resort to a simplification of history, and I think we need to be careful about that if we're following the news from Poland about the Holocaust laws and so on. Uh, it's, it's not a far stretch, it's not a far you know, leap uh, uh, to, to uh, reduce history to kind of uh, uh, you know, Kievan Christianity for Ukrainians only or for Orthodox only. The fact is, in 988, everybody was Orthodox and Catholic equally. There was no split between East and West yet. Um, so we need to bear in mind those things in history that can help us um, uh, uh, bring a unified perspective. And also, where sometimes history uh, divided people, uh, we need to figure out ways to, to transcend that and to overcome those divisions uh, for the future.